Hi folks, another DIY video for you today. I got into building a tillering tree for weighing bows on and a few people had said, oh, I'd love to see how you did that. So I've kind of halted progress. I'm going to try and catch up with it on this video and then go through the process trying to show you guys how I put this tillering tree together. It's not going to be the best, most perfect tillering tree in the world. It's very much for the enthusiastic amateur. It's nowhere near the spec a bow you would use or anything like that. But it might be interesting to see uh, how simple or otherwise it is to put together. All being well, it should end up looking a bit like this. Okay, before we get into the build, let's look at what we need. I've got myself a two meter piece of lumber, and this is 77 millimeters wide by 44 millimeters thick. You can obviously use other stuff, but this is just what I happen to find at the local hardware store. Um, I've got a pulley wheel. Now that will guide the uh, string, which will pull the uh, the string down of the bow. I've got three good sized screws and obviously I've got a few tools. Now what I've decided to do is initially what I was going to do was cut a length of this off, actually two lengths, and then do a, a, a sandwich with the middle one being further down so that the bow sat in the middle. Uh, and when I started to get into the project I thought it just looked scruffy so I decided to change my mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off about eight inches and I do apologize for mixing my metric and imperial measurements here but I'm going to cut off about eight inches and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and I'm going to mount it on this main board piece but I'm actually going to mount it 20 centimeters so that the bow sits the actual bow sits 20 centimeters down along this backboard and the reason for that is in case I need this up here for either bolting it straight to the wall or if I want to uh, drill through that way and then I can put a strap or a um, a length of rope through for tying it up we'll have to see if it's not needed later on once I actually start using this I can always cut it off later so I've got plenty to work with as this is a two meter length so that's the first thing I've done I've measured down that's actually 18 I've measured there I shall have to redo that so I'm going to measure down 18 uh, sorry um, 20 centimeters from the top now, I've actually got ahead of myself on this build and so I'm trying to catch up to show you guys what I've done. With that 20 centimetres, let me just double check what width that actually is. That's, what have we got here? No, it is actually, there we go. I've got 18 centimetres cut off of the end of my two meter length of wood. What I've done then is I've cut out this space here and that's where the bow is gonna sit. So I've cut down five centimeters and I've cut in about 40, uh, sorry, five, yeah, five centimeters, 50 millimeters. And I've cut in 44 millimeters. All right, that's where the bow is going to sit. So the backboard is going to be like this, okay? What I've done then, I've just sloped this off just to make it look a bit neat so as it's not quite so blocky. Now, the reason I've gone for these dimensions is this here from where the bow sits to here is actually about five inches. Let's just have a little look at that. 
Yep, not sure whether you can see that on the camera. That is actually bang on five inches. And the reason for that is it will take even low brace height. So you can imagine when the bow is sat on here and it's braced up prior to uh, checking the draw weight, um, the string is going to sit there if it's braced, if the brace height is five inches. If it's anything bigger than that, which let's face it, most bows are, like eight inch, it's going to be down here somewhere. So that's why I've gone for this kind of size here. All right, so that's jumping ahead. Let's look at what I did in the workshop. Okay, so once I'd positioned the shelf, I drilled three holes for mounting it. And then once I have my three holes, I countersunk them so that the screws sat nice and flush with the back of the uh, backboard. Here we can see the piece that I've cut out for the uh, mounting the bow onto the tillering tree. And from the two meter length we've got here, I cut off exactly 18 centimeters. You can see there how it was cut out from the board. So we've got 44 millimeters was cut in and we've got a distance of five inches from the shelf to the bottom of the uh, mounting block. So that left us with 50 millimeters kind of securing piece at the front if you like and it mounts onto the backboard just like that. Here we can see 44 inches down from the shelf I've marked and drilled a hole and that's going to be for the pulley wheel. Okay, so as you can see on here, I've got my three holes drilled for attaching my uh, bow rest, for want of a better word, on, and it's nicely countersunk at the back. So let's start getting some screws in. screw these into my table and I'm just going to start with the middle one to begin with just get that just so that it's poking through position my nicely cut out bow rest onto the middle screw not quite all the way tight. Just want to straighten it up, make sure everything lines up properly. Uh, yep, about like that. And then go ahead and screw the other two in. And then tighten up the middle one. There we go. nice and tight solid so about 40 inches from where the bow sits on this shelf here down you saw in the garage I drilled another hole here and that is for the pulley wheel to go into okay so the next job is to screw the pulley wheel into the backboard and roughly line it up along the length of the tiller entry. Okay, pretty much all we have to do now is figure out our cord. I'm probably going to use paracord, looping it under and through the pulley wheel, and then up to where the bow will sit and some method of attaching it to the bowstring. Now then what I've got to use is this luggage 
sort of luggage scales. What you use will depend very much on how often you're likely to be using this setup. I don't use one very, very often. So this thing here for, I don't know what I paid for this, about eight euros, I think, should be plenty. It's not gonna be as accurate as a Boya set of scales, but it's gonna be plenty good enough for what I'm going to use. And here we can see, I've got my paracord. So the bow's gonna sit up there. The bow string will be about here. I can hook that straight onto the bow string. And I'm gonna to have to rig up some kind of sling of the paracord to go around here. And then the paracord will come down and around the pulley wheel like that. So I'm gonna have a little play about with that. And then once I've got something sorted out, I'll show you guys where we are. Okay, I've had to have a little bit of a rethink on that last little bit with attaching the scales to the string. Didn't like it at all. It was, it was very, very unsecure. Uh, wrist damage in the string, the bow, the scales, the whole lot. So let's have a look at what I came up with. So here we go. And I found that the, the bow was very loose in here. So what I've done, I've found some leather just to pack it out temporarily. And it sits very, very solidly now. And what I've done, I've taken my paracord through the pulley wheel and I've attached it to a heavy duty, what would you call this, a carabiner? Yeah, I guess. So it comes down, just clips on the string, obviously being careful not to nick anything. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect, but it's a start. I probably will uh, look at refining this design in the, fu in the future. But just to get me started with weighing bows, this seems to be working quite well. So anyway, there's the clip, there's the paracord. Down through the pulley wheel. It's not even a particularly heavy duty pulley wheel. There was no specifications on it, but it's, uh, as we can see on there, think is it gonna yeah it says 50 millimeters the roller on there if it's uh, if it turns out that it's not up to the job then I can always upgrade that at another time so then we come along and away and what I've done is I've put a loop in the paracord and that loop works in conjunction I'm trying to do this with one hand now. The paracord goes in that hook like this. There we go. So now we can see the full setup. Nice steady bow, secure connection from the carabiner, nice straight pull obviously from the pulley wheel and let's turn this on. Is it going to, come on, please focus. There we go, we can see that's on zero. And then as I apply pressure, we can see that's, that's only coming up to about, I don't know, 20 inch or something, but you get the idea. So as I'm pulling, and then I've marked a line on here temporarily. That's my 28 inch. So if I pull that down to there, that's the 28 inch. In fact, it's a little bit more at the moment. And I can either read it off the scales or when it beeps, um, it stays on whatever the poundage was. Okay, not particularly accurate because I was doing that one-handed. But when I've been doing it two-handed, it shows that this particular bow with this particular setup is a 40 pound bow. And that's uh, pretty much what it is. So there we go. Just summing up what we've actually done. We've got our two meter length of lumber. We cut a piece 18 centimeters long off 
which we notched to sit the bow in. Kind of angled it off and smoothed it up a bit so as it looked pretty. Securely fixed that to the back post. And I can't stress that enough. This has to be absolutely rock solid. Up until now, I haven't used any glues in here in case I need to dismantle it or what have you. But once I know this setup is good, I'll probably get in some glue in there and then screw it all back in. If you have the opportunity, bolts or at least one bolt all the way through would be the most secure. And then just say two screws at the back, something like that. All right, and then what we did, we put our pulley wheel in and I'm fairly certain I'm gonna keep my eyes open for a, a better pulley wheel than this. I'll see how it goes. I mean, it's, it's not gonna fail on me, but I, I don't know. It's, it's not the best piece of gear that I've got. Other than that, I've got my carabiner. Again, I'm not 100% happy with this. Um, there's lots of kind of sharp bits in here which you could nick a string with. So I'm gonna look for a better solution on that. We've got the paracord. Paracord's good as gold. That's 550 um, strain paracord. So that's not good anywhere. And then we've got our cheap as chips luggage scales here. And for me, somebody who's not a bowyer who just wants to check bow weights, I think this setup is going to be, as I say, a good start. There's room for improvement. Now, you might find that a slight variation to this design may work better for you. I'm not saying this design is the best thing in the world, far from it. But if you get ideas for a good starting point, then I'm happy to have done the video. So folks, that's the build done. It's fairly straightforward. One bit of wood, a little bit cut off the end and shaped, screw the two things together, a pulley wheel, some kind of cord, and some method of actually weighing what poundage is going through the bow. I've used luggage scales, but look online, there's so many different designs, it's ridiculous. Uh, you can adjust the design that I've made to suit your own needs, uh, different material dimensions, different luggage, different, uh, sorry, different scales, uh, different pulley wheel, what have you. But the principles still remain the same. Uh, I'm gonna be interested to see how I get on with mine. As I've mentioned in the video, it's not perfect. It's quite a few little tweaks and fine tuning aspects that I wanna take a look at, but I wanna get using it and see how it goes first of all. Hope you've enjoyed the video. That's it for today. Catch you next time on Robin Hood Archery videos.